I've always been an animal lover. As a kid, I'd spend hours poring over National Geographic magazines, fascinated by the diversity of species and their habitats. My parents, though not veterinarians themselves, encouraged my curiosity, adopting a menagerie of pets, dogs, cats, rabbits, and even a brief stint with a rescued parrot. This exposure sparked a desire to help animals, to understand their behavior, and to make a positive impact on their lives. Becoming a veterinarian seemed like the perfect way to combine compassion with science. However, life had other plans. After high school, financial constraints and family obligations led me down a different path. I took on various roles animal shelter volunteer, pet groomer, and even a stint as a zoo docent keeping my passion for veterinary medicine alive, albeit on the sidelines. Fast forward to today, and I'm still getting asked the same questions by friends and family, when will you take the plunge and enroll in vet school? Or what's stopping you from pursuing your dream? Their inquiries are well-intentioned, but they also stir up a mix of emotions, guilt, longing, and a hint of uncertainty. Now, as I approach my 40s, I'm forced to confront the what-ifs and maybes. Is it too late to start anew? Can I truly make a career change and still provide for myself? Life has a way of presenting unexpected opportunities. Recently, I found myself at a crossroads. I'm single, with no dependents, and my career path took an unexpected detour. Due to company-wide budget cuts, I lost my job a frustrating but liberating twist. Losing my job wasn't a reflection on my abilities, it was simply a numbers game. Yet, as I navigated the initial shock, I realized this layoff might be the universe's nudge toward a new direction. With no family commitments to consider, I have the rare gift of freedom. No one relies on me financially, and I can take calculated risks. The timing seems almost serendipitous, a chance to reevaluate my priorities and align them with my true passions. As I contemplate my next move, the question echoes within me, why not now? Why not use this unexpected break to pursue veterinary medicine, the dream I've put on hold for so long? The thought sends both excitement and trepidation coursing through my veins. What if this is the moment I've been waiting for? What if this layoff is the push I needed to transform my life and finally become the veterinarian I've always wanted to be? As I weigh the pros and cons of pursuing veterinary medicine, one glaring consideration stares back at me time. By the time I complete the rigorous coursework, clinical hours, and earn my Doctor of Veterinary Medicine DVM degree, I'll be 41 years old. At first, this prospect gave me pause. Would I be too old to start anew? Would the energy and stamina required for this demanding field be zapped by my 40s? But then I recalled a conversation with one of my mentors, Dr. Jenkins, a seasoned veterinarian who'd taken me under her wing. Her words still resonate deeply. You're going to be 41, no matter what she said with a warm smile. Wouldn't it be better to be 41 with a DVM? Think about it, you'll have invested four years in yourself, your passion, and your future. Four years will pass regardless, don't let fear hold you back. Her logic struck a chord. Was I letting age become an artificial barrier? Would I regret not taking this chance? Dr. Jenkins' words now echo in my mind, bolstering my resolve to seize this opportunity. Despite Dr. Jenkins' inspiring words, pragmatism begins to creep in. As I approach my 40s, financial stability becomes increasingly important. The harsh reality is that pursuing veterinary medicine won't come cheap. I think about the substantial student loans, the opportunity cost of foregoing a steady income, and the years of intense study ahead. Will the financial payoff be worth the sacrifice? Or am I jeopardizing my financial security for a dream that may not provide the same level of stability? On the other hand, I have a solid, albeit unfulfilling, career path currently. My previous job, though eliminated due to budget cuts, provided a comfortable salary and benefits. I could easily find similar work, pay my bills, and maintain a predictable lifestyle. But at what cost? Sticking with a job that doesn't ignite my passion means resigning myself to a life of good enough. Is that truly living or just existing? The thought sends a shiver down my spine. I'm torn between two conflicting desires, financial security and personal fulfillment. Do I prioritize stability or take a leap of faith and invest in my dreams? The answer much like my future, remains uncertain. As I grapple with this pivotal decision, I find myself pondering the bigger picture. What will truly matter to me when I look back on my life? What regrets will haunt me and what choices will bring me peace? I imagine myself lying on my deathbed, surrounded by loved ones, 
Reflecting on the journey that's come to an end, will I be thinking about the money I made, the titles I held, or the security I maintained? Or will my thoughts drift to the dreams I chased, the passions I pursued, and the lives I touched? Will I wish I had spent more time doing what truly made me come alive? That's when I realize I need guidance from those who've traveled further down life's path. I'm seeking wisdom from people who've experienced their own share of triumphs and regrets, to those who've lived, loved, and learned what advice would you offer. When you look back on your own life, what matters most? Did you prioritize passion or practicality? Do you have regrets about the choices you made? I'm eager to hear from individuals who've navigated similar crossroads and emerged with valuable insights. Your stories, your wisdom, and your hard-won perspectives could help shape my own path. One, I'd love to hear your candid thoughts on chasing one's dream career, even if it means sacrificing financial stability. Was it worth the risk for you, or do you know someone who took the leap? Did you ever feel like you were rolling the dice, hoping that passion and hard work would ultimately pay the bills? Or did you find creative ways to balance your dreams with financial realities? What advice would you give to someone like me, standing at this crossroads, weighing the pros and cons of pursuing a dream that may not offer the same financial rewards as a more traditional path. Two, as you look back on your life, do you harbor any regrets about your financial or career decisions? Are there choices you wish you'd made differently or opportunities you let slip away? Perhaps you stayed in a comfortable but unfulfilling job too long or took a risk that didn't pay off. Maybe you wish you'd invested more in yourself or pursued a passion project sooner. I'm eager to learn from your experiences both the triumphs and the setbacks. Your hard-won insights will help me navigate my own path and potentially avoid similar regrets. Share your stories and let's glean wisdom from each other's journeys. Story 2 Am I the asshole for cutting off my fiancé's finances and kicking him out after finding out he cheated on me with my so-called best friend? I'm still trying to process everything that happened, but I'll try to keep it short. I 32F have been with my fiancé, 34M, for what feels like an eternity five long years. We got engaged last year and I thought we were happy, or at least I thought we were working towards a happy future together. I've been shouldering most of our financial burden since my salary is significantly higher than Jake's. I thought I was being supportive and helpful when I added him to my credit cards, giving him access to our shared financial resources. I figured it would make things easier for both of us allowing him to handle some expenses without having to constantly ask me for money. Little did I know, I was enabling his deceitful lifestyle. My best friend Emily 31F and I have been inseparable since our college days. We've shared countless memories, supported each other through thick and thin, and I considered her a sister. Jake and Emily always got along great, and the three of us would often hang out, go on trips, or just chill at home. But about a month ago, I started noticing a change in Jake's behavior. He became super secretive with his phone, always finding excuses to take calls in another room or step outside for fresh air he was constantly texting. And his phone would buzz nonstop with notifications. At first, I brushed it off as work-related stress, but the feeling of something being off lingered in the back of my mind. I just couldn't shake it. That fateful night, I couldn't shake off the feeling of unease. Jake was fast asleep, but my mind was racing. I tried to distract myself, but my eyes kept drifting back to his phone on the nightstand. Something compelled me to pick it up, to uncover the truth. My heart sank as I scrolled through his messages. Explicit conversations between Jake and Emily stared back at me, their words piercing my soul like a dagger. They were planning secret meetups, exchanging flirtatious banter, and even discussing a future together. A future that didn't include me. The betrayal cut deep, like a wound that would never heal. I felt like I'd been living a lie, that my whole world had been turned upside down. The next day, I took action. While Jake was at work, I methodically dismantled our shared financial life. I canceled all his credit cards, severed his access to our joint account, and packed up his belongings with a mix of sadness and anger. I changed the locks to our home, symbolically closing the door on our relationship. I left a note, my words clear and firm do not contact me again when Jake found out he erupted in anger, hurling accusations at me cruel, vindictive, heartless. But I stood firm, my resolve strengthened by the pain he'd caused. As for Emily, she's been eerily silent, but I've cut her out of my life too. The wound is still raw, but I know I need to protect myself from the people who hurt me most. 
As the days pass, I'm starting to question my actions. Was I too harsh? Should I have handled it differently? The doubts creep in, making me wonder if I overreacted by going nuclear on Jake and Emily. I think about all the memories, the laughter, and the tears we shared. But then I remember the betrayal, the lies, and the pain they caused me. I'm torn between my desire for revenge and my need for closure. So Reddit, I'm asking you, am I the asshole for cutting Jake off financially, kicking him out of our home, and severing ties with my former best friend after discovering their deceitful affair? Help me make sense of this chaotic mess.